Now I have friends one more very important and lovely job to do which is to announce the formation of the Australian Consortium for Women's Mental Health and I have some inaugural members in the audience and I'd love you to come out with me so we can talk a little bit about it. Dame Quentin Bryce is our Queensland representative and, and, uh, and you know absolutely um, powerful, wonderful person to have on board who said we should do this tonight. Um, so I, I'm thrilled that, I, that, that you're here and that we can take up your suggestion. So Dame Quentin, if you could come and join us. We also have um, colleagues from Jean Hales, and that is Janet Mitchell-Moore, who's the CEO, and Professor Jane Fisher, who um, is also Professor of Psychology in the School of Public Health at Monash University. We also have Dr Sally Coburn, who represents primary um, health, which is uh, general practitioners, as well as medicine in the media. We also have Rosemary Calder, who is the director of a new mental health think tank, and she will talk to us about her policy work. She's been a former advisor to um, health minister. And we also have Susan Armstrong, who is a consumer advocate and who is um, the director of the women's only ward movement. So the, we also have members who are unable to be with us here. We have Dr. Deb Bateman, who is the director of the um, Family Planning Society in New South Wales. We also have Professor Anne Sved Williams, who is the director of the Marseille Society and president of the Marseille Society in South Australia. We have good wishes and involvement from uh, Professor Vera Morgan, who is in Western Australia. And we also have um, colleagues from Tasmania who have also joined us as well. So you can see that we do have an Australian consortium and we want more members. We want some male members as well. This is not uh, women only, but with this group, we want to push this field forward to make women's mental health a national priority so that we can offer better outcomes for women across the nation. So this is the consortium. Uh, I, I feel quite evangelical now talking to uh, younger women who often come and uh, speak to me about uh, hopes that they have and are looking for some mentoring and advice and support. Uh, people who ask me what do I hope for my uh, uh, granddaughters. Uh, now what I say is uh, how important it is for them to take very good care of themselves. And really, for me, I have to say this evening, uh, sitting uh, through all this, I've been thinking so much about uh, uh, prevention and uh, how we must bring up all our children. Uh, I know we're talking a lot about uh, resilience. You know, it's, a, it's becoming a buzzword, really. It's vitally important. But for our, our young ones uh, to uh, learn how to take time uh, to refresh their mind and body and spirit, to take good care of themselves. And I think an enormously important way of doing that is learning and giving time uh, out of hectic, uh, crowded, uh, frantic lives uh, with you know, all of the technology around them to develop uh, the uh, inner resources that we all need through lovely things in life, through the arts, through beauty and music and taking time for poetry and uh, you know, lying on the grass looking up at the clouds. and That's how you build those inner resources because uh, the most important journey in life is to the centre of ourselves and learning about ourselves, understanding <coughs> ourselves. So uh, I, I think this is a, a, an enormously uh, significant step uh, uh, in leadership in this issue uh, from Professor Kulkarni and uh, uh, her colleagues. And uh, I agree with Rosemary's comments about these issues being so key to our nation's well-being, but they're not, they're not cutting through. And I hope that, you know, Jay Shri, I'd just like to see you writing a fantastic opinion piece that comes out of Mental Health Week and this event and uh, we can all get behind it because you know your, your research, your intellectual rigour, your record, uh, it's, a, it's a source of courage and support uh, to, to all of us in the community like me and, and most particularly to 
to uh, grandmothers, I have to say, who, uh, who do care very deeply about these issues because our, our top priority, wherever we are in the world as women, as elders, is, is the future of our children and our grandchildren and uh, their, their well-being and how we build, uh, uh, build that up. And one of the things, uh, I don't want to start another oration here, but one of the things <laughs> I, I was thinking of too was how during our inquiry, we spoke to many uh, women, we looked at many coronial inquiry reports. Uh, in, in so many ways, what we saw is how many health professionals there are, other professional groups as well, uh, but how many health professionals across those disciplines have contact with women who are vulnerable, who are experiencing uh, domestic violence. They can recognise that, but they don't do anything about it because they don't know how to do it. And uh, I think younger ones uh, in training now are <coughs> learning that. But it's a very serious issue. But when you start talking about recommendations in a report about training for general practitioners, I've had a lot of meetings with the college about this, you know, it, whether it's the police, whatever group you're talking to, they get very defensive when you start talking about the need for training in how to respond, how to confront, how to take action uh, uh, on uh, domestic violence. And, you know, that's, that's something for all of us too. I, I rather like that phrase, you know, we've heard a lot during Mental Health Week that just even having the capacity to say, are you okay when you're feeling there's something? All of us. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jayshree, for your extraordinary lecture and for this, this opportunity. There are really three things that I would like to add to what's already been discussed. Uh, Janet Michelmore and I have the privilege of running together a really unique, uh, innovative organisation, which is a combination of a not-for-profit in the community and an academic department. And together we're absolutely committed to the health of women across the life course, but in particular to focus on mental health, as it influences every aspect of uh, healthcare, healthcare participation and women's relationships with every aspect of what they do in, in their lives. And so Jean Hales for Women's Health in the Community has an extraordinary reach out into uh, every part of Australia, but in particular broadly in Victoria. And together this means that research is informed by <coughs> women's perspectives and research evidence is then translated in many highly imaginative formats into being made accessible to women and the health uh, professionals who care for them. So the first one is the potential of these innovative collaborative approaches to make change. The second is just to inform you that there's an extraordinary coincidence in Australia at the moment, which is that the world leaders of some of the main international expert bodies for mental health are Australian women. So uh, Helen Herman, some of you will have heard of, who uh, would be with us if she could tonight, has finally been elected president of the World Psychiatric Association, a quite extraordinary achievement. And she's making women's mental health her priority. Uh, she is currently president of the International Association for Women's Health, Mental Health and Jayshree is her successor. And uh, the current president of the International Marseille Society, which is the specialist society for perinatal mental health, is uh, headed by Professor Jeanette Milgram, again, who couldn't be here tonight. And I, am the, uh, I was elected last year in an international ballot to succeed her. And this is not just chance. I think it really is that uh, Australia does encourage women leaders, despite the many barriers that uh, can be faced in developing this, but also that the quality of research and clinical innovation that takes place here is really of an international standard. And I think what this consortium will allow us to do is capitalise on this really remarkable coincidence. And uh, the last uh, part I would like to focus on is the great importance of prevention. 
it is far better to stop these problems occurring than to be trying to do what Jayshree is doing, which is treat very complex embedded problems once they occur. And we can do this by respectful relationships with women, by reducing their exposure to interpersonal violence and by ensuring their equal social and economic participation. And so these much broader agendas are fundamental to really reducing the mental health problems faced by women. And we need high quality research evidence to continue to know what we're doing and to make sure that what we're doing is having a beneficial effect. Hi, I'm Sue Armstrong. I'm a consumer consultant or a person who has a lived experience of mental illness. Since about 1988, I've been involved in the, the consumer movement in Victoria and I've always focused on women's issues. There's two things I'd like to say tonight. First of all, with the support of Jay Shree, um, we're spearheading a campaign and a lot of other women um, supporters is that it's time to reinstate female-only psychiatric wards. The reason I say females is because we're talking about women and girls. And the other thing that uh, I'd like to see is uh, there's been a lot of um, interest in family violence and um, over the years I've heard some terrible bloody stories about you know, women with psych disabilities and family <coughs> violence. What I, I, and sometimes the women's organisations don't actually do such a good job when they're faced with women with psych disabilities. What I think is the solution is that we need more outreach domestic violence workers who could actually go to the women in the inpatient units and help them deal with um, their issues there. And the, the, final, the last bit that uh, I'm going to give a plug to it, I've been the chairperson of an organisation called Mixed Arts Media and we're by and for people with psychiatric disabilities and we make accessible videos. But I'm very pleased, and my colleagues are here this, this evening, is we've now set up FIG, which is the Females issue, Female Issues Group of Mixed Nuts Media. And we'll, we're planning, and also with support, to start making um, videos about women's mental health. If you'd like to be in on the joke, um, Ask me out later, why do, we, why do we call ourselves Fig Jam? Thank you. <laughs> we talk about discrimination against women. What about the discrimination in medicine against psychiatric illness? Um, I was once uh, just recently told by a physician about a patient, hey, your patient's really good. He can probably go home tomorrow. And I said, what do you mean? He told me that Malcolm Fraser stole his pants this morning. And he said, oh, sorry, I didn't mean his mental state. I meant his physical state. All his blood tests are really good. What we need is integration of mental health issues that just to be viewed the same as physical health issues. We also need the Medicare benefit schedule to recognise the importance of a consultation for someone who is suicidal or someone who has a mental illness, because frankly, it isn't something you can do in 15 minutes and anyone who has. <laughs> so may I say, why am I any less special in general practice when I counsel someone who is suicidal for 45 minutes than someone who spends 10 minutes taking out a cataract? Okay, my goodness, my blindness, I'm not blind, I'm not blind. That's important. It's sexy. But what we need to make is, well, this is not going to come out right, psychiatric problems, mental health issues need to be seen as sexy within the medical profession. And I think it's very important. There is, just to put a plug in, a mental health, sorry, a Medicare benefit schedule uh, reform going on at the moment. Feel free to put a submission in and tell them how important uh, mental health item numbers should be and they don't get slashed and we get more money for the proceduralists. So is that a bit of a plug I've just put in there? <laughs> but it's very important that mental health... And that's the trouble, and that's one of the reasons as a, as a person in the media that I want to speak up about mental health, because often you are not in a position when you have a mental health problem to speak up for yourself. Champions like these people are absolutely wonderful. But it's great to also have champions who have got the lived experience, and that's what we need. More uh, people to stand up, less stigma associated with it, and, uh, and I must say that the, the two-pronged approach being that we need to reduce the stigma within medicine itself and also in the media. And uh, I'm so proud to be part of this consortium. I'm so shouting from the rooftops. But can I just say, each of you, if you just tell four or five people, including your GP, that this has got something that's got to change, we will have a ripple effect. That's how you get culture change.